Morning. It's a Sunday morning. And this Sunday morning goes by the title, by the title Caveat Entor. Hopefully I pronounced that right. Um, Caveat Entor is uh, Latin for buyer beware. And if I've got that wrong, please, you know, don't don't out me on the channel, but just say, you know, numpty. Um, but what it actually means is that the, the person buying should go into the transaction with their eyes open. Why is that important? Well, at this time of the year, as I said, many of you are probably thinking about treating yourself to a new piece of shiny equipment for your studio or live rig. Um, and are starting to look at eBay for maybe nearly new um, items. Now, there are a number of items on eBay that are you know, coming up as, you know, I bought it, it's been sitting in the box for six months, I'm selling it, it's got a warranty, blah, 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 blah. Right? So you might get some bargains. Fair enough. The reason I use the word buy beware is that the warranty, if they say that they're selling it with a warranty, you really need to be quite careful. The reason why I bring this up is that in the last couple of weeks, a friend of mine has done exactly what I've just described. She went onto eBay, she wanted a piece of equipment, um, she found a nearly new piece of equipment. It wasn't cheap, it was quite expensive. Um, the seller said, I am selling this with a warranty. She bought it, and it's been working fine for probably about three or four months. No issue. All of a sudden, it's developed a fault, okay? And it looks like the fault is a manufacturer's fault, um, and the, good, the, uh, the particular keyboard in question needs to go back to the manufacturer. Now, she's rung the manufacturer up and said, I've got a warranty on this keyboard, and the manufacturer said, prove it. So, that's what I mean by buyer beware. Now, in the UK and the European Union, we have a number of laws that protect um, individuals, okay? There is the two-year rule, which basically means that if the goods are faulty, you can return them to the place of purchase. And you have to be really careful because in the UK, a lot of um, vendors will say this is a, uh, uh, manufacturer issue, you have to talk to the manufacturer. Uh uh. Contract law says that you it is between you and the place you purchased it from. That's where the contract has been made, and the person you purchased off must give you a two year warranty against defective goods. Okay, so if it stops working after after uh, two, one year and 11 months, you can still go back to the place of purchase, assuming you've got a receipt, and you can get the uh, item rectified or they have to supervise getting the item fixed for you they don't have to give you a new one but they have to make sure that it's fixed and if it's beyond repair then they might have to give you your money back that's how the law in europe works probably works differently around the world but you need to be very under understanding how this stuff works now again under european law manufacturers have a seven year defective goods clause under statute. Now that's across the European Union. It may change when we, when we go through Brexit, of course, but across the European Union as it currently stands, there is a seven year rule. Uh, again, but it's against defective goods. So if, it, if it's something that is wrong with the machine and you've, you've taken care of the machine, so unfortunately if you've gigged it and thrown it in the back of vans and stuff like that and it's scratched to hell, you probably aren't going to win this one. Um, but there is a seven year rule that says the manufacturer, after that initial two year period, for the next five years, for defective workmanship, the manufacturer has to deal with the issue. Now they will fight tooth and, tooth and nail for it, and probably the longer you get away from the, the point of purchase, um, you probably will have more and more difficulty trying to prove it is a defect in the manufacturer as opposed to a um, an issue that you've created, you know, by dropping the keyboard or spilling liquid in it or whatever it happens to be. Um, and when I say keyboard, I mean any piece of music equipment, any any piece of electrical equipment, actually, in, 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 in those terms. So, buyer beware is the key. Now, also, you have to look at where you're purchasing from. If you go to the, if you go to the high street, you go to a store, 
um, I don't know what it is. I mean, in this country, it could be a sort of Curry's or a, you know, my favourite toy store in Guildford, which is called Anderton's. If you go to the store and you buy a piece of equipment, you've made a contract between you and you and the vendor. You will get a receipt from that piece of equipment. Okay, and you've got a point of contact to take the piece of equipment back. Obviously, if the shop goes bust, that, that sort of muddies the waters a bit. But hopefully, if you've gone to a reputable dealer, you know they will be there in a couple of years' time. Should you need to take it back, when you go to eBay, eBay has a seller's agreement, which basically means that if the goods are not fit for purpose, then you can return them to the person you purchased those goods off of, and you can get your money back. Because if you don't get your money back from eBay, Assuming that you've been clever enough and either used a credit card or you've used, um, with my hair, bloody awful, um, you've used a credit card or you've used um, PayPal, then one of those two mechanisms will actually refund the money and then go after the vendor for you. So, you know, there, there are ways of doing it. Be very careful with some of the other portals that are springing up now to do this sort of selling because I'm not 100% convinced that they have the same um, buyer protection that somewhere like eBay. eBay's been going years and years and years, and some of these other new upstarts have only been around for sort of like you know, five years or so, and I'm not sure that they've got the level of protection in place um, that protects you, the buyer. So, you know, if they if they do have a PayPal uh, ability to pay by PayPal, pay, use it because PayPal will protect you. If they do have, if you can't use PayPal, use a credit card. Um, again laws change in different parts of the world but definitely in the UK the credit card company under the Consumer Credit Act will indemnify the purchaser for 40 goods okay so buyer beware caveat enter the other thing to think about when you're buying off the internet is if somebody does say they're giving you a warranty make sure you ask for a copy of the original receipt because the original receipt gives you a point in time not only does it say where the goods were purchased from, and you're not really concerned at this point how much they cost, because you've obviously bid on eBay to buy those goods, so you know, at the end of the day, if you bid more than the guys sold them for, well, you know, buyer beware. But it gives you a point in time where those goods were sold, whether those goods were sold um, new, or whether they were sold actually second hand from wherever. And it also gives you a date and it's the date that becomes operable from a warranty perspective. So if you had to return the goods, the date that's stamped on that invoice is the date that that warranty will start. And obviously in two years time, stop. In, in seven years time, stop. Okay, so you know, make sure that if you are buying something with a warranty, you get all the documentation that supports the fact that it is being sold with a warranty. A couple of other things you need to really look at, and this, this has caught me out in the past, and I'm probably more of a savvy buyer now than, than I ever was. Um, be very careful in what it says in the description. Right? Look, out, look for words like untested. It works but is untested. In which case, what the buyer is doing is giving himself a get out of jail card because he can turn around and say, "I never tested, but I said it. I said the last time I used it, it worked." Okay, if he's not selling, if he's selling it as um, second hand, or he's not selling it just for parts, if he's selling it for parts, fair enough, he's put his hands up. But if he's not selling it for parts and he's selling it as it works, um, but untested, he's giving himself a get out of jail card because you bought the goods with that description. Also, if you look through the description, it says as new it's not new okay so it's second clearly second hand even if it's advertised as second hand as new does not mean new uh, it just means it's in very good condition um, if it's if there are things on the on the um, on the description that may say things along the lines of there is a trip a chip in the corner or a keys chipped or something like that be very careful to, to read through the description of the goods make sure you look at the photographs also and quite often i mean what i do is if i'm buying something where i think it's a bit dubious i'll actually take screen captures of the photographs um not because i don't don't disapprove of, uh, i disagree with what the seller's saying it's just i want to i want a, a record of some of what it was what the condition he said it was in before 
I then purchased it because once I've purchased it and it's arrived here or gone down to the studio, then it's on, it's it's for me to determine the condition of that piece of equipment before it was sold. You know. So the other thing is, look, if you've got if you've got um, a buyer who puts lots of photographs up the, up on there, the likelihood is he's trying to be straight with you. If you get a buyer who puts a single photograph up, the likelihood is there is something wrong. Now, the, the, the thing I would cite, I don't know whether you remember, but I bought an A80, uh, a controller keyboard, quite a while back now. And I went down to, I uh, can't remember where it was now, but it was way on the other side of London, on the, on the Thames Estuary. I went down to pick it up from the vendor. And when I got down there, what I found was that somebody had put gaffer tape over the A80, and that gaffer tape had been left and effectively welded itself to the case. Now. I know what I'm doing, so I was able to actually get all that sort of sticky gooiness off the keyboard, um, and the keyboard actually came up really nicely. But in the photographs that the vendor sent to me, or the, the vendor put up, he strategically placed uh, items over that area. Now I didn't care too much because I picked the A80 up for an absolute song. Um, you know, I've seen them go on here for five hundred pounds plus. And I paid nowhere near that. So for me, you know, even if it had a few dings and, and marks on it, I got a good deal. Um, but also make sure you, you know, as I say, if the, if the vendor's got one photograph, start to question. If there is photographs with things strategically placed on the keyboard, um, you know, then obviously ask the vendor if he's got some more photographs. You know, can you see, um, you know, that area of the keyboard? in more detail because you want to see the sort of the, the graphics and the labels um, just to make sure there is nothing untoward or if you want him to zoom in on the back and one of the things I ask quite often when I see a, a keyboard come up where it's not very clear whether it's a 240 volt a 110 volt or 117 volt um, piece of equipment you know which region of the world does it come from I quite often ask them to take a specific picture of the voltage plate that sits on the back of most of this stuff um, just so that I understand, you know, what I'm playing with here. Am I, am I, do I need a step down transformer for it? Can I rectify it? Because a lot of these keyboards are actually multi, even though they don't sit on the back of them, they actually can do multi region because of the transformer that's been put in there. It's normally a transformer and a fuse and a couple and a, and a, and a resistor or two that needs to be swapped out, but you can actually change the, um, the voltage uh, region quite easily if you know what you're doing. So, Going back to how I started this, this is the season where Caviar Entor really, really needs to be a dear to. And on that sober note, I'll see you next week. Bye bye. So, this is the point in the video where I turn around to you, my viewer, and say if you enjoyed the content of this video, please give it a thumbs up. The way the Google and YouTube analytic engines work is that the more likes you get against the video, the more it gets promoted by YouTube and Google, and therefore more people with the similar interest to what you have and I have get to see this content. This channel is driven by my love of music technology. That's what it's called, the music tech guy thought. If you've got queries, want to ask questions about themes or issues I raise on this channel, please, please, please do. Put your comments into the uh, comment section below the video and I will try to address whatever issue it is you've raised or whatever question you've raised. If it's something to do with me making future videos in terms of uh, how to do something on a particular piece of equipment I possess, please feel free to say that as well. I can't promise to make videos on all the requests I get, but I do have a jolly good go at making most of them. Around about here is the subscribe button. Again, to do with the uh, YouTube and Google analytic process, the more subscribers the channel gets, the more the channel gets promoted, and the more people get to see the content that you have obviously just watched. If you want to see my latest video, it will be in one of these two boxes on this side of the screen. Also, there is a second box there, and that video will be chosen for you by YouTube based on your YouTube preferences. 
I look forward to the next time that we interact. And I do mean interact because I always enjoy reading your comments back to me. But for now, bye-bye.